Okay, I'd like to get ourselves into chapter four, and what we're doing in chapter four is discussing the concept of a moment. So what is a moment? If we take a force vector and apply it at some point on a body, and then at another point in the body, say we put a nail through a body here, and we want to know what kind of rotation this force is going to apply to that body or the amount of torque, shall we say, that is going to be applied. This force acting at the perpendicular distance from the line of action of the force 2.0. So another way of taking it is that we, we drop a line from point O that is directly perpendicular to the line of action of the force. In this particular case, that's going to be d perpendicular, and in this case, it's the exact d perpendicular is the exact length of the position vector. We're going to calculate moments that act in the counterclockwise direction as being positive, and so in this particular case, it's going to be a plus f, the magnitude of f, times the perpendicular distance. Now we're going to introduce the concept of the angle. And the angle is formed from the uh, direction that the force vector is pointing, the position vector is pointing in, and rotated into the force vector. So we get an angle of theta, in this case is 90 degrees. So r times the sine of 90 degrees is 1. So we find out that r and d perpendicular are equal to the same value. Now, those that's a positive moment. If we just do one thing but change the direction of the force so now again if I took a nail and put it in here and I pulled down in this direction this sheet of paper would rotate in the clockwise direction so again keeping this notation where uh, counterclockwise is considered positive I now have a negative sense so my moment is negative force times d perpendicular the angle between the two is still 90 degrees so we end up with minus f d perpendicular, or in this case, r sine theta. If we again take a look at situations where the line of action of the force are not perpendicular to the position vector, and again, what are we talking about? We have <coughs> a point that we're interested in determining, determining the moment about, and we go from that point to the point of application of the force. And that's how we're defining the r vector. The r vector, the position vector, goes from the point of app, the point of rotation that we're interested in, to the point of application of the force. The force has a line of action, and we're going to look. The moment arm is d perpendicular, so we're we're not really changing anything that you learned in phys one. The moment is still the moment arm times the force, but in this case, the moment arm can come down to the imaginary extension of the force vector which is its line of action. So in this particular case the moment is positive because it's causing a counterclockwise rotation f times d perpendicular. Now if we look at the angle that's made between the r vector and rotating into the line of action of the force we get theta equal angles over here and r the length of the r vector times the sine of theta gives me the perpendicular distance. Looking at a slightly different situation, we have again the r vector is from the point of rotation that we're interested in O to the point of application of the force. <clears throat> now the angle theta is again if we move up the position vector in this direction and then rotate into the force vector uh, is the only thing is about this rotation it is it has to be less than 180 degrees in other words I can't go from the force vector the position vector and rotate through 180 and go another angle so that's the one restriction we need to be less than 180 degrees and why that is is you see this is theta this is 180 degrees minus theta the sine of theta and the sine of 180 degrees minus theta are equal to each other so r sine theta r sine of 180 degrees minus theta both give you the perpendicular distance which is here and again it's the perpendicular distance from this point that we're interested in to the line of action of the force
Now, if we want to make it in a more general case where we're talking about these perpendicular distances, I can take any position vector and break it into its x and y components. And then I go to the point of application of the force and take that force and break it into its x and y components. And what we find out is that the x component of the force vector is a distance of ry perpendicular from point O. And again, rx then becomes the perpendicular distance from point O to the line of action of the Fy component. So now again, utilizing our counterclockwise notation here, we find that if we look at Fy at a perpendicular distance of Rx, it's causing counterclockwise rotation. So it comes in as a positive value. We go to Fx. So Fx is pointing in this direction at a distance of Ry, and it's pulling the sheet of paper into a clockwise direction. So it comes in as a negative. So I have, so in this particular case, when I break the force vector and the position vector into their respective components, I end up with one component being a positive moment going counterclockwise, and then the other component causing me clockwise rotation, which comes in as negative. And we can get the exact same thing. We change the situation where the force vector is now acting in this direction. Again, we break the R vector into an X component and a Y component. The X component gives the perpendicular distance of the Y component of the force about point O. In this particular case, Fy times Rx is in the clockwise direction. So it comes in as a negative. So here's negative Rx, or Fx times Ry. And then we look at Ry. And here's, oh, sorry, we already did that one. Um, well, they're both coming in as negative. Fy times Rx clockwise and Ry times Fx clockwise. So there's nothing special. What I'm trying to show you here is that this one's positive and this one's negative. This one's negative and this one's negative. And there can be situations where they're both positive. It's all going to depend upon what type of, where the direction, where the force is and where the point of location is. All right, let's take a look at a quick example. So in this particular case, we wanted to find, we have two forces applied to the same point and we want to know what they do, what kind of moment they result in measured about this point O. So the first thing we need to do is determine what is the X and Y components of this position vector. The position vector goes from a point O to the point of application of the force. Here it is. So if I utilize my standard XY coordinate system, we find out that here's our X. Well, we know that there's six feet plus six times the sine of 30 degrees. So there's a total of nine feet in the x direction where it comes in as a negative nine i. And then we have our y, which is just gonna be six times the cosine of 30 degrees. So 5.2 feet. And here becomes the r vector. Now, we have two forces acting at on this pipe, uh, F1 and F2. We could take each of these individually, but since they're both acting at the same point, the easiest way to do it is calculate a resultant force. So F1 plus F2. F1 has a positive X component of 300 times the sine of 30 degrees. The resultant then we take uh, minus 200. So 300 sine of 30 degrees minus 200 gives me a total X component for the resultant of minus 50i, and there's only, uh, F1 is the only one that has a Y component. It's in the negative Y direction. So minus 300 times the cosine of 30 degrees J. So this gives me my total resultant vector. So if we then take a look at what we have, we have the point of rotation that we're interested in calculating the moment about point O. We have the vector, which I've broken up, the position vector, which I've broken up into an X component and a Y component. The X component goes to the line of action of the Y component of the force, or the resultant force. So RY times RX, the direction of the rotation is going to be counterclockwise. So that's going to be positive. So we're going to get a plus RY 
Rx. Now we look at Rx at a moment arm of Ry, and again these are both causing a clockwise rotation, a counterclockwise rotation. So again it comes in as positive. Now because we're assigning all the signs by looking, visually looking at what's happening here, we're not going to take into any of the uh, signs with regards to the uh, ij component, shall we say. We're just looking at their total magnitudes. So ry has a magnitude of 260 and a moment arm of 9, and together they cause this counterclockwise rotation, so it's assigned a positive sign. Same thing with Rx, it has a magnitude of 50 at a moment arm of Ry, which is 5.2, and we end up with a total moment, about 0 0.0, due to the application of these two forces, of 2600 foot-pounds. And we're getting this uh, unit by the fact that we are multiplying a distance times a force. All right, uh, for you guys to do homework problems, I have assigned two problems here, and these are very, very similar to the problem that we've just worked. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email.